Since you're here, it's probably fair to assume that you already know what Make.com is, how incredibly powerful it is to create workflow automations for your business or your clients, and how you can leverage that in the first place to make more money, more sales, or whatever it is that you would like to do with it. Now, based on that and the fact that you probably read the title of this video, I assume you are either an awesome automation engineer or you're a business owner that already understands the power of it and you would just like to make a little bit more with that in a short amount of time. Because this video is specifically about some goodies that we learned inside of our agency to make things faster. Because obviously, Obviously, speed always matters and delivering things faster always pushes you ahead of your competition because you can deliver on results faster. Now, I have to mention that what I'm going to show you today is only saving you a couple of seconds to maybe a minute every time you do that. But obviously this accumulates the more often you do it. And since inside of my agency, we built incredibly, incredibly powerful automation scenarios inside of make.com, we'd really save quite a bit of time with that. And I'm a massive, massive fan of those small kind of optimizations because that allows us to actually create really complex things and we can deliver them to our clients in less than two weeks, which is an incredibly, incredibly compact time frame. But again, I just want to emphasize that those small automations is the reason why we can do that. And this video is basically my approach of giving you a bit of that for free so that you can implement it into your company or for your clients to just get a little bit more of time out of it and have maybe a higher chance of pushing ahead of your competition. Now, since you're probably already familiar with make.com, you've probably already heard of the HTTP module, which is a module that I'm going to show you right here on the screen. When you click on add a module, we add the HTTP module and maybe just a request. You probably already know that this module basically allows you to do a request to an external platform that is not hosted on make.com so, so that you can communicate with it without the need for any kind of custom code or custom integrations. All this module does is it can send requests to an external platform and it can receive data from an external platform. So this is incredibly powerful for things that make.com not natively integrates with or maybe the integration isn't good enough. In our example, and if you have seen my previous videos, you probably know that make.com isn't the best if it comes to go high level integrations. So we use a lot of HTTP modules to make the authentication and actually communicate with API endpoints that we can usually not access by their API or by their make.com integration itself. Now where's the whole time saving part? The time saving part is because we currently or we had to until at some point create all of those HTTP modules manually which means we really need to put in every single value and I'm going to show you that on a screen as an example so you know how you would usually do it if you are not really focused on the time saving. So let's assume for example we would like to connect to an endpoint let's say in that case on the go high level documentation they have one that's called get free slots where you can basically get the free slots of a calendar on your go high level account which again we often use that for getting the availability of a calendar so that we can use it inside of our agency for having voice spots that can book me and schedule meetings for our clients. Now this just as a side note but what we would usually do is we would obviously add the HTTP module right in here and as you can see it requests a couple of values so I would basically match the URL with the URL that we need from the endpoint which in that case would be the get free slots endpoint up here I'm just going to copy that paste it inside of the URL field here then I would basically match the request method to the response in that case, or to the request. In that case, it's a get request, which already matches. So now you can see here, we also need a couple of other parameters. The calendar ID, which is defined directly inside of that request. We don't have that right now, so we just ignore the fact that it's there. We can usually later on just replace it by our own. And you see that we also need to define a couple of query parameters that are always required by Go High Level to basically get the information that you want, right? And the same counts for headers. So for headers, you basically need to have a bearer authentication token, which you probably can look into my previous Go High Level video that I created, which explains all of that, what it is and how it works. In our case, we can just ignore the fact. So what we would usually do is I would copy basically that name of the header. I would head into make.com and I would add a new header here, paste authorization. And here I would just write bearer, space, and then basically the token that we have, right? I would do the same thing for the other parameters, which would be version. And then I would basically be able to just copy that version that is required for this module over to the make.com scenario. And I would do the exact same thing for all of the query strings that are required. So in that case, you can see it is end date and start date. So we could literally just go over, we can take the end date and we can match it to our format. And basically in that case, I'm just going to use the example and I'll paste it here. And once I have basically filled everything out, I would click on okay. And then I would test the module by just right clicking and run this module only. Now, you can see that by just filling out those kind of requests and actually understanding the documentation first, what is required and putting it in here, you sometimes need up to a minute, maybe two, for getting this thing set up or maybe even longer if you really have no idea how the documentation works or it's not that properly documented. And what we now implemented inside of our agency is a custom made GPT that we use to create all of those modules dynamically. And this is incredibly powerful because it just allows us to do things faster while we actually focus on other work. So it's not just that we save time, we are also more efficient, which again just gives us even more time 
to do more productive things while building out scenarios. So if you're part of my journey for a while now, you know that I really, really, really love to share things with you that you can implement into your business and make more money with it and leverage that. And I usually do that completely for free. So you can simply head over to my hub, my resource hub, which you find below in the description. It is hub.integraticus.com. You can get access to it for free. You can download all of the templates, including this custom GPT I'm going to show you here. And trust me, you want to see it. And especially when you see it working, which I'm going to show you right now, because it is so incredibly powerful. Now, since you already know now how it works, if I would have done that whole thing manually, now let's look into how we would do it with our custom GPT. So once you're logged into my resource hub, you will find a link to this custom GPT called make.com HTTP module generator. And what it does is it basically allows you to create a complete module within our form make.com inside of ChatGPT by just defining a couple of variables. And usually we do this by defining the curl statement, which in the end is nothing else than a request using the curl method, which you can see here. So it's usually kind of like a command that you can type into a console to get that required value or the required information from that request. And most documentations, this is not just for Go High Level, this is for most documentations that you will find in the internet, even if they are usually a bit poorly documented, they have some kind of curl statement like you see right here, which in the end is just starting with a curl command, and then it has a couple of values that basically simulate the request that we would also do inside of make.com. It's literally nothing else than making a request. Now, let's say we use our prompt generator right here. What I would need to do is I would just open it, I would start a conversation by just opening the chat, then I would basically head over to the documentation where I want to create the module for. In that case, it would be this kind of statement right here. So all I'm going to do is I'll copy it, I head over here, I'm going to paste it into the chat. I pre I'll actually, I could press enter, but since this is a lot of unnecessary tokens from that bearer token, or from the JWT token, I'm just going to shorten it with a couple of points. So you can see now, this is the request that we would use inside of our agency. So obviously most of our automation engineers are familiar with it setup. If you don't, doesn't matter. All you need to do is paste it in here, press enter, and now it's going to ask you to give this whole thing a name. So in my case, since I basically have that get free slots endpoint, what I'm going to do is I copy that name, I call this thing GHL get free slot endpoints. And this is also the name that is then used inside of make.com. So now if I press enter, you will see magic happen because what is going to happen now is we, get, we are getting a whole JSON generated for us that we can then literally just paste into make.com, which turns into a really completely optimized and formatted HTTP module. And yes, this takes a couple of seconds, but in the meantime, we could already work on something else, right? We could basically already set up the next kind of endpoints, whatever it is that we need to work on. And we basically just wait until it's done. And you can see now that it is done. So what I'm going to do now is I'll simply click on copy code. I head over to make.com and you will see now once I press paste, we have a completely new module that is called GHL get free slots which is the exact name we gave it. And when I look into it, you can see here that it defines already the URL, it has the proper parameters, it set the acceptance, it also set the bearer token, so I can literally just replace the part with the dynamic bearer token that I created. It has the version added, and you even have the query strings directly inside of those fields with the predefined values. So I can literally just replace them by the dynamic data, whatever that dynamic data is, and I can literally just click on raw or on, on okay, and I can test this thing. This one, by the way, if you have seen it here, it also sets the response automatically to parse response because in most cases, when you work with make.com, you want to parse the response to use all of those extra or separate fields instead of the next kind of modules that you add to the scenario. Now, in my case, every time I'm using this, it's just awesome to look at. It feels really good and it saves you quite a lot of time if you, if you see it from an accumulated point of view by just saying you create not just one automation scenario, but maybe like 10 or 20 for your clients and you need to adjust this and this and this. You literally just drop in the statement and it will work out of the box. You make less errors and it's still, it does an incredible job of just working out of the box. Now, while this is one of the time-saving aspects you can do using ChatGPT, there are tons of others. And I promise in my future videos, you will see even more of those kind of time-saving optimizations alongside of a lot of other things that get really, really interesting. So if you enjoy this kind of content, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I'd really, really appreciate that. And if you have any questions regarding that or anything else on my channel, or you would even like to see a custom video about something special that we haven't covered so far, you're most welcome to share it below in the comments. That's it. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.